Hyperion is one of Marvel's versions of DC Superman, acting sometimes as a parody version of the character on the Squadron Supreme team. But when it comes to his power set, just how similar is this character to Kal-El? Welcome back Nerd Squad, it's me Amanda, join me today as we count down the top 10 secret powers you never knew Hyperion had. Which do you think is Marvel's strongest character? Number 10, Faster Than Lightning. I knew Hyperion was fast, but I did not know he was that fast. Honestly, kind of the same with his strength. It's interesting to learn he's an Eternal, because Eternals I always think of being somewhat limited in terms of their physical abilities, even though they are extremely powerful. Hyperion as an alien Eternal though, might be even more powerful all around. In addition to the super strength you've likely marveled at before on the page, Hyperion is also extremely fast and has been shown to move faster even than light itself. If we are talking the Earth 13034 version of the character, which is also considered one of the main versions. We'll get into that in a minute. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, be sure to let us know that you love us and that you love Hyperion by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 9, Eternal Physiology. Seriously, I just learned this one, even though it seems oddly intrinsic to this character. I don't know how I missed it. I thought Hyperion was just a powerful alien from another world like DC Superman, being one of the Marvel equivalent characters. And he is, but he's also, in a very Marvel way, an Eternal. A powerful full eternal alien. So I had to share that with you in case, like me, you also did not know this and you just thought he was an alien from another world. The important thing to know with Hyperion is there are many different versions of him since he himself is not even inherently an Earth 616 main continuity character. And when it comes to which Hyperion is considered the mainstay, that has actually kind of changed over time. For this point though, we're talking about Hyperion of Earth 712 who first appeared in Avengers 85 back in 1971. The first Hyperion to to appear, I believe, in the comics. And when it comes to this version of the character, he is actually considered to be an Eternal. In fact, I think all versions of him are still considered to be Eternal, but still, somehow, I missed that origin. This is how Hyperion is able to channel energy, which ultimately charges his powers. To be clear, this version of Eternal Physiology does not translate to robots, like we learned in the MCU, which is also based off of a revelation of what the Eternals are in the comics as well, at least the Earth-based Eternals. However, at this time, they were just prehistoric humans initially who were experimented on by the Celestials when they visited Earth more than a millennia ago. And the Celestials also went out to other planets, did this in other places, so there are other Eternals. Hence why Thanos is also kind of connected to the Eternals. He's also one, but from Titan. Number eight, invulnerable in every sense. Okay, so I knew Hyperion was invulnerable, but what I didn't fully comprehend is just what high level of invulnerability he possesses. If we're talking about Earth 712 Hyperion, the first version of the character to appear, we have seen him completely unharmed by impossibly strong weapons and metals, such as Ultimate Wolverine of Earth 1610's adamantium claws. Wolverine's claws are typically known for being able to cut through most things, but apparently Hyperion is not one of those things, or beings rather, that he can harm with his famous weapons. Aside from that, this version of Hyperion has also withstood direct blows from Thor's famous Uru hammer, Mjolnir. Withstanding the blow of Thor's hammer is no easy feat, and even some of the most resilient heroes and villains from Marvel crumble under the weight of its blows. So. Pretty impressive. Number seven, doesn't need to breathe. We don't know this one for sure when it comes to certain versions of this character, but what we do know about Earth 712 Marcus Milton, aka Hyperion, is that he can travel in space without any assistance. He doesn't need a special suit, and it doesn't seem to be through the specific use of a power that he can protect himself from the cold vacuum of space. Some believe he can survive flying around in space where there is no oxygen because, well, he doesn't actually need to breathe. On top of this, we know that Hyperion can continue to fight for days on end without tiring, only growing tired after multiple days of relentless and unyielding battle, where he has to operate at his peak levels of power. While not confirmed for Earth 712's Hyperion, the version of Earth 13034 has confirmed that he doesn't depend on oxygen to survive, which likely means that his 712 counterpart doesn't need to breathe either. Number 6, Powered by the Sun. Something else that I find 
fascinating about Hyperion and that I didn't personally know is that he is literally solar powered. He can actually absorb a solar energy and use this to give himself energy, which is how he can fight for so long in battle. He basically takes in the solar energy and converts it to usable energy in his body. If his solar energy stores are full, once he depletes energy accrued through other more typical means for us humans, he can use the solar photons to keep himself going, converting those into energy which he then uses to power himself. I guess this shouldn't surprise me considering he is, like I said earlier, basically one of Marvel's versions of DC Superman, but I didn't know that he was that close to an adaptation, even sharing Clark's sort of solar based abilities in some regards. It's a little different, but still similar. Number 5. What tires us only makes him stronger Not only does Hyperion not need to breathe, which makes him a pretty scary foe to face, to be honest, if you had to, but he doesn't tire at all in the same way that we do. When humans exert themselves, and more specifically their muscles, they actually expel energy. The stress on your body and your muscles causes you to tire physically, and in some cases mentally, and causes you to get sore afterward in response to this stress. For Hyperion though, the stress and chemicals that we release, the community to us to slow down actually only power him up. So as he gets exhausted, he actually becomes more energized. The fatigue turns into energy in his body because of his unique physiology. Meaning that while some other Marvel characters might tire through when they're fighting Hyperion in a battle, Hyperion would be more than ready for the next round, despite clearly having just exerted himself. Number four, immune to extreme temperatures. While if you put most of us below freezing or above boiling temperatures, we'd simply get super messed up and and eventually die, for Hyperion, this is not a risk. The version of the character that hails from Earth 13034 is actually so durable that he can resist the effects of extreme temperatures, meaning that freezing him or setting him ablaze will basically have no effect on the hero, at least when it comes to the temperature. He can apparently survive temperatures lower than negative 200 degrees Celsius and higher than 6 thousand degrees Celsius. I can't even imagine spending a full day outside when it's higher than like 45 degrees Celsius, so I can't imagine how he doesn't just simply turn into a literal human puddle of goo in plus 6,000, but apparently he would still be solid, even in that super extreme, extreme heat. Number 3. Cosmic Energy Powered Healing Factor I would expect someone like Hyperion to have a healing factor, but what I wouldn't have guessed is exactly how said healing factor works. For Hyperion, he is actually able to manipulate cosmic energy, and it is through this manipulation that he heals himself. His healing factor is so intense that it protects him at all times from disease, infections, and even erases the effects of aging, keeping him eternally young. However, it is also reliant on his cosmic energy stores, which is also what he uses when activating his atomic vision. So while you might have known that Hyperion has a healing factor, you may not have understood that overusing his atomic vision, which depletes his cosmic energy stores, results in Hyperion being unable able to heal himself. However, as long as he can survive whatever injury was done to him, he can always replenish his stores to heal later, so it's a temporary thing. Using his atomic vision actually also does damage to his eyes, meaning that he actually has to use the cosmic energy to do both if he wants to be able to see after using his atomic vision powers. Number 2. Microscopic Radiation Vision Hyperion can also see things that most humans cannot, such as microscopic traces of radiation on the human body. At one point, he is asked about a dead body and is able to identify that it is not from the same world as the one he occupies. He can tell this just from looking at the body that the solar radiation it has absorbed is basically not the same, thereby discerning that the being is from another world entirely. He shares this information with SHIELD director at the time, Maria Hill but believes that is something that she already knew about and wonders what else she knows that she might be keeping from him. So Hyperion isn't just a heavy hitter, he's also quite intelligent and has enhanced senses that only add to his knowledge and perspective of the world around him and those that inhabit it. Not someone you want to mess with guys, not someone you want to mess with. Number 1. Held off an incursion If you are not familiar with the incursions, they are basically when various worlds started to come together colliding. As a result, many Earths, their heroes and their villains died, with those universes obliterating one another in the collision. When the incursions came for Hyperion's world, he decided to put himself in between the collision to stop it, and for a moment he actually succeeded, holding the two universes apart, using just his own strength. However, he couldn't hold this forever and eventually the worlds would collide, but even then Hyperion would remain. This was a feat accomplished by the Hyperion of Earth 13034. I still can't believe that he survived that. That's crazy. That's about it. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.